So we're going to sing our opening hymn, and my apologies if I lose track of the number of verses. Uh, I'll try not to. Uh, our opening hymn, uh, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. <coughs> sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. And we pray, God of mercy, 
We acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done, and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us for all that is past, and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. The collect for today, the first Sunday after Trinity. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love. Help us to walk in ways of wisdom, that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. And a prayer for those affected by coronavirus. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we might find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So we hear our New Testament and Gospel readings. The New Testament reading is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 5, starting at verse 1. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Then Jesus went about the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. 
Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I want us this morning to think about one of our jobs as Christians. That is to share the good news with others, with those we see at work, those we see at school, with our friends and with our families. When Jesus walked this earth, it was one of the things that he did, along with healing people and teaching them. He told them about God. We heard this about, about this in our first verse of our gospel reading, what we've just heard. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and sickness. But Jesus saw the crowds. He was just one man and the task was too big for him on his own. So he says to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. So we heard in our next few verses of a reading that Jesus sent the twelve out to play their part. He said, as you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. In our reading, the disciples do as they're asked. Luke doesn't tell us anything more about how they got on with their mission, but if you read Mark's Gospel, it tells us. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. Sounds like they did quite a good job, really. But we know they, know they did a much better job after Pentecost, after they were given the Holy Spirit that we heard about a couple of weeks ago in our service. They spread the good news and thousands came to faith and the church grew. And if you read the book of Acts, you'll see how the good news spread around the surrounding countries, around the Mediterranean. The task of sharing the good news, the job of telling people about Jesus, has passed to all of us. And if you'd like to look at the screen, then you'll see a video that I put together earlier this week to help us to try and think about this. The plate represents the world. The milk is the people in it. The drops of food colouring represent the good news. The cotton buds represent us, you and me, and where we are we can do our bit to tell people, we can make a difference to those around us. The washing up liquid represents the Holy Spirit. If we dip the cotton bud into it, then look what it does. The Holy Spirit makes a real difference. It helps spread the good news. If we're filled with the Spirit, we can do so much more for God. It's what the disciples did in the early church. The harvest is indeed plentiful. There's a whole world that needs to hear about Jesus. It's one of the things we're called to do as Christians, to share the good news of Jesus with others, with those we see at work, those we see at school, with our family and our friends. Empowered by God's Spirit, we can do amazing things for him. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, 
and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's just sit all day for our prayers of intercession. And so to be bidding, Lord, in your mercy for responses, hear our prayer. Lord God, you are bigger than the universe and more powerful than we can imagine. We can't see you, but we know that you are with us. We thank you for everything that is amazing and beautiful. We also pray about all the things we don't understand and all the things we wish were different. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your world is a big and wonderful place and you ask us to care for it. But sometimes the troubles of the world seem too big for us. We don't know how to stop the fighting. We don't know how to feed all the hungry. We don't know how to live without all the things that are harming the planet. Make us more careful, more generous, more peaceful, more loving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your church is a place of teaching, worship, friendship and care. Thank you that we are back in church for our services. Find your people together. Find your church together. And make us one as you are one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, thank you for everything that is good about our life together in this community. Help us to care for one another, to be good neighbours and good friends. We think of those close to us who are in need. We don't understand why they have to suffer, but we ask you to bless them and love them as we love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Lord God, thank you for the love that binds us together in life and that lasts forever, even when we die. Thank you for the people who have shared our lives, but who now live in heaven. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. So shall we stand to share the peace with each other? Obviously we'll do the wave, nod, smile at each other, although in your little groups you can uh, uh, do whatever you like. <laughs> so let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you, it's off on another side of things.
turned away you did not reject us but came to meet us in your son you embrace us as your children and welcome us to sit and eat with you in Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us he opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin on the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends he took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to them saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me father we do this in remembrance of him his body is the bread of life the end of supper taking the cup of wine he gave you thanks and said drink this all of you this is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit with this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, 
have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. So let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out of the power of your Spirit to live and work at your praise and glory. Amen. And so we sing our final hymn before our blessing notices etc so go forth and tell O church of god awake
next Sunday we are back to normal with a 9.30 start. There is no need to email or ring me to book in for it. As many as want to come are very welcome. Sunday's club will be restarting, which will be fantastic. And Sunday evening there will also be Ignite Discuss live in person with food at the Rectory. Uh, much better than doing it on Zoom. Um, in terms of next uh, Sunday, we've been asked if possible to collect some non-perishable foods for Guernsey welfare. They've been doing an awful amount of uh, deliveries, much more than normal over the course of the lockdown. They could do with uh, some more stock if possible. So if you can next week bring uh, any tinned items, dried pasta and various things like that, or bits for lunch boxes like snack bars and penguin biscuits, that would be fantastic uh, if we can uh, supply some of them next week, the week after we'll be able to uh, take them down uh, to Guernsey Welfare for folk who need them. That's Sunday. Wednesday of the following week there will be a Bible study 7.30 live and in person. Thursday the 25th there will be a service at St Appleen's live and in person. And then Sunday the 28th, um, a couple of weeks notice for you, we're going to do a picnic, we're inviting everyone to come and join us for a picnic at the Rectory. If you'd like to come and join us you'd be very welcome, it's open to everyone. Uh, bring your own food, bring your own seats and rugs, we will provide uh, drinks. And if it's absolutely throwing it down, we may well cancel, but uh, hopefully we'll have good weather for it. So a final prayer of blessing and dismissal. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.